everybody welcome to the morning devo with bowo hope you guys are doing great today december the 8th friday and that means it's my wonderful wife's birthday yeah i've been married over 30 years to uh gosh someone that i grew up with someone i grew up down from right down the street from and um yeah it's just been awesome she's super cool um and i always get to hang out with this cool person um every day um so many and she's been awesome to be with me through all the ministry and wow what uh that in itself is amazing um and um just to be there such a support and everything like that so happy birthday sylvia 
Um, and may it just be an awesome day and a good birthday month too. That's for sure. So, uh, I know, uh, she has many wishes on her birthday mind and, uh, she loves her family. She loves, um, so many people. And, um, uh, she's one of those people that just has one of those hearts. That's super cool. Uh, and, uh, you know, things matter. So, uh, you know, um, um, praying she has some just a great day with friends and uh um yeah some of those great birthday wishes she has comes true so anyway let's get into the the psalms i do my devotions going through the bible i'm in psalm 106 yesterday i had meetings all morning so i wasn't able to get into the the devo like i like to so i'm kind of excited just to get back in it and kind of get the get the brain focused upward. And that's what the Psalms are about. These are songs. These are Hebrew songs, but they are in our Bible. They're in the middle of our Bible. Uh, they're in what's uh, organized by in the section of poetry. And, uh, and that's beautiful. Uh, God is an artist, and we see that God's portrayed as an artist in the Psalms. Not just an artist, but a judge and a king and a father. And so many of the attributes we see um, that people talk about when they talk about the Christian God or the Jewish God is focused, is, is actually from, it's rooted here in these songs. And songs are cool because they are, uh, lyrics are a kind of poetry and uh, they have a way of expressing. Sometimes they use different uh, kinds of disciplines of, um, of organizing words to be able to express certain things. And so that's what's cool about them. Um, in Psalm 105 and 106, we see a lot of history being kind of go, gone over in these songs. It's a way of thinking back. And I love that, you know, songs that make us think back. So let's read Psalm 106 and kind of see what that's about. It says, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithfulness, his, his faithful love endures forever. And it says, who can list the glorious miracles of the Lord? Who can ever praise him enough? There is joy for those who deal justly with others and always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people, come near and rescue me. So it's cool. It's that idea of come near, rescue me. It's a cry out to God we see, but it's also just a giving thanks to God, right? For his enduring love towards us. And I love that line in verse three that says, there is joy for those who deal justly with others. You know, what is my dealing with others like? You know, we might think that we're right. And, you know, uh, but really just in your heart, you've been, you know, kind of unkind. Um, or you, just the way you talk is very harsh. Um, and you've said things that are harsh to people. And, you know, we haven't really dealt justly with others. You know, we really haven't done that very good. And that's something, you know, to look over. There is joy for those who deal justly with others, who do the right thing. When I think justly, I think of that do the right thing. I think of that old movie, Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee in a way. But, uh, you know, just do the right thing. Um, so sometimes we, we think we win a battle, but really we weren't really very good in it. You know, I don't know if we did really justly. Uh, in the whole situation. So it's something to look at in our life. Um, you know, the hardest words are always, I'm wrong, you know, that I didn't do the right thing um, and to walk humbly. But that's what the scriptures tell us to do, right? Uh, he has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly and to walk humbly, um, right? Yeah, justly, to walk humbly, you know, to do the right thing. And sometimes we got too many things coming at us too. Too many people in our ear that really confuse us as far as what to do. What is the right or just thing to do? So sometimes we got to kind of shut the noise off and just get focused back on the word. You know, when you said those comments, did you, were you loving people? Did you really love your neighbor? 
you know, or were you harsh to them? Did you say things that really, mm, really, you knew you were going to give it to them, you know, kind of thing? <sighs> Maybe there's that resentment and bitterness and things like that that's in there. So in the heart, instead of really just dealing justly with people, dealing dealing with people the way, you know, Christ would, you know, how would Jesus deal with this person and you know that's something we always have to ask remember me lord when you show favor to your people come near and rescue me Hmm. i love that it's that cry of again coming to rescue in verse four let me share in your prosperity of your chosen ones you know let me rejoice in the day of your people let me praise you with those who are your heritage You know, Israel obviously is what's in sight. We see that the Psalms are just littered with this idea of God blessing Israel. You know, God speaking to those 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 chosen people. And this sometimes gets us a little in a pinch where we go, hey, God chose certain people and not other people. What's up with that? Instead of looking, and that's a very prideful way of looking at it. But maybe I got to look at it as like, you know, humbling myself. You know, maybe if I walk humbly with God, then I would be okay with how God, what he's done and how he has chosen whom he has chosen. And, and I would just surrender to that and be like, Hey, that's okay. Instead of fight constantly striving, you know, against my maker, so to speak. You know, sometimes we're always just, I'm looking for an excuse, you know, to go against God. And sometimes that's what's in your heart, you know, is that, you know, I can, if I could just find an excuse to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, instead of having to, you know, do that old thing called walk humbly, you know, then I'll do it, you know, I'll say it. And, but here is that real clear idea in the song that, you know, God is God and God will choose. It says, let me share in the prosperity of what? Your chosen ones. Maybe I need to have that attitude of just, God, may I, may you be gracious to me to share in the prosperity of your chosen ones, Israel. So instead of people in the world being jealous of Israel and fighting against Israel, maybe if they say this statement, right? Hey, Lord, let me share in the prosperity of your chosen ones. Let me rejoice in the joy of your people. Let me praise with those who are your heritage. Let me come with them. Let me be a part of them. Now, isn't this cool? Why? Because in the New Testament, it says this is what God's done to us, us non-Jewish people. He has engrafted us in. He has brought us in to this place with his chosen people. He's brought us to this place of salvation through who? The Jewish Messiah, right? The Jewish King, right? Yahshua, Jesus. And so this is what Jesus has done. He's brought us into the kingdom right? And through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, to, in a sense, be a part of that inheritance. Um, You know, we get to share in that inheritance with Israel. And so you see the New Testament saying, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Why does it say that? Because of this passage is one reason. Psalm 106. Why for the Jew and for the Gentile? Well, because let me have, let me what? Share in the prosperity of your chosen ones. Yeah, it's for Israel, right? Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. Salvation is of the Jews, Jesus says in John chapter 4 to that woman at the well. But we as non-Jewish people get to be share in that wonderful inheritance. Isn't that cool? We get to come right in there and be a part of that inheritance with Moses. Whoa! I mean, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, the writer of so many Psalms, right? So very cool. I like that. 
It says, let our ancestors, our, like our ancestors, verse 6, we have sinned, we have done wrong, we have acted wickedly. Our ancestors in Egypt were not in, impressed by the Lord's miraculous deeds. They soon forgot his many acts of kindness to them. Instead, they rebelled against him at the Red Sea. Even so, he saved them to defend the honor of his name and to demonstrate his mighty power. Why has God saved you and me? It's for his name's sake. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so that he receives glory. Interesting, right? It's about God, God's glory. Wow. Notice that they admit, the writer admits that, hey, you know, like our ancestors, we too have sinned. Have you ever thought you were a little better than the people back in the day? You know, those people back in the day, they were really a mess. They really didn't know. But we in our modern age, we really got it down, you know, because we we tend to live a little better. You know, more people live, you know, out of poverty and those kind of things. So we <clears throat> tend to think that that's great, that everything's getting better. It's getting better all the time, I think the song said from the Beatles, right? But... You know, there's something that's really a cool lyric here, and that is it says, you know, like our ancestors, we have sinned. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, we're, I think overall, we're probably living a lot better. But like our ancestors, we have sinned too. And like our ancestors, we've just gone the way of the the, the different gods that have always been, right? The lustful gods, the powerful gods, the, you know, the God of strength, right? The um, God of fertility. We still worship these um, and we still are ruled so much by our emotions. So, you know, even though I like to think I'm jamming, you know, um, we're jamming as a human race, um, it doesn't take much to go, we're not that great, <laughs> you know, right? And so uh, Casey says, one of the most valuable lessons Jesus taught me about forgiveness towards others is getting outside of the victim mentality. Mm, so true. So good. Paula says, good morning. And she'll have to catch up the, on the uh, YouTube after physical therapy. And Patty Farmer says, happy birthday to Sylvia. I love the joy in your face you had speaking of her. That's right. You only go glorify someone if you are filled with what joy about them that's right if if you know, joy is the expression of glorification really right if you want to show something is being glorified you talk about it with what joy oh man i love that hockey game that was great hockey you know you hockey's something you enjoy it's glorified that kind of thing so thank you yes sylvia's cool i got so many cool stories about her <laughs> you know we got a lot of fun stuff we grew up together party together la together downtown la together i mean man wow a lot of stuff and um and uh come to christ together uh just uh, so many beautiful beautiful stories right and so okay let's kind of move on it says in verse 8 even so meaning even though they rebelled at the red sea it says he saved them grace right he gives them grace hey even though people have sinned against you right even though people have sinned you know we still have to have grace it doesn't mean we don't do the right thing. No, we want to deal justly, as the psalm says. But we do so gracefully, right? Yeah, we do so gracefully. Sometimes that's with a lot of pain in our heart, right? Because we might be sad over decisions loved one makes, right? But even so, he, he, he loved them. He, he saved them, right? Uh to defend the honor of his own name, right? God will be honored and he will save. He promised to save Israel. He will save them. He will uphold his promise and honor his name. 
And it says, he commanded the Red Sea to dry up. He led Israel across the sea as if it were a desert. So he rescued them from their enemies and redeemed them from their foes. Then the water returned and covered their enemies. None of them survived. So it's a retelling of the Red Sea. But I just love the idea that God in his grace comes to Israel's uh, rescue. It's not that Israel, like you have this story of this narrative of God, Israel being all that. And they're so great that, no, they're a mess the whole way into if you will, sanctification, they're, as they're being moved towards the promised land, right? Towards the place of rest, it's all bumpy and it's all, you know, yucky and they're just not doing too good. But he rescues them. He will be faithful. He who began a good work in you is you got it, faithful. Then his people believed his promises and they sang his praise. Hey, when you when you really dig someone, you like to sing songs about them. You know, do you sing songs about the one you love? You know, it's a good question, you know. Now, I got a lot of songs. I got songs for my kids. I got songs for Sylvia. I got so many songs. It's like thousands and thousands. I got so many albums on albums in my brain. And that's how my brain works. But I, I grew up a musician, you know, playing music since I was in elementary school. And so I just have a lot of tunes in the in the old noggin, you know, doing that. But sometimes you paint a picture. Sometimes you do other things, other artistic things in lieu of your love for someone, you know. And that's really a cool expression. And, uh, and notice that God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Gave what? His one and only son. Woo! An artist expression. Yeah. Giving. Giving the best right? Jesus is that wonderful work of art, in a sense, of the Father, right? The incarnation. Beautiful. Yet how quickly they forgot what he had done. They wouldn't wait for his counsel. Hmm, sometimes I don't wait for God's counsel. Sometimes I just, what? Rush into something. Hmm, I can think about that today. Wait on the Lord. Don't rush into it. Don't go on the impulses. In the wilderness, their desires ran wild, testing God's patience in that dry wasteland. We can relate. So he gave them what they asked for, but he sent a plague uh, uh, along with it. The people in the camp were jealous of Moses and envious of Aaron, the Lord's holy priest. Right? Hey, why am I not a pastor? Why is that guy Bo up there? I mean, that dude's a wreck. Like, why should he be up there? Right? You kind of have this <clears throat> kind of jealous streak. Man, why is that guy teaching? I could do better. You know, we can get all these kind of ideas in our mind. Moses and Aaron, leadership. But you know what people did? Turn bitter towards them. <clears throat> Don't toward go that way towards the ones that God has put in place. God has done that for a reason. And maybe it's to humble me, right? Maybe it's to teach me. How to walk in a more humble way. So it says, because of this, the earth opened up and they swallowed Dathan and buried Abraham and the other rebels. Fire fell up their their followers and flames consumed them. Hey, I don't want to be a rebel in the church. You know, am I more of a rebel than really someone who helps? Am I a helper? Or am I a rebel? A rebel is talking always bad about things. Oh, what about this? They should have done this. Da, 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 da. It's constant blah, 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 blah. You know, negative, negative, negative. Right? Rebel, 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 rebel. Instead of saying, how can I help? What can I do? God, what do you want me to do to help in the body of Christ? Bringing the gospel and the love of Christ to people. Hmm. The people made a calf at Mount Sinai. They bowed before an image made of gold. They traded their glorious God for the statue of a grass-eating bull. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done such great things in Egypt. Sometimes we exchange God for what? A grass-eating bull. Mm. Yeah, I can relate to that too. 
such wonderful things in the land of Ham, such awesome deeds at the Red Sea, so he declared he would destroy them. This is verse 23, that so he declared he would destroy them. But Moses, his chosen, stepped between the Lord and his people. He begged him to turn from his anger and not destroy them. It's another great, just repetitive narrative of things that have happened in the past, right? And uh, I love how Moses steps in and says, God, you know what? Don't don't punish uh, your people, you know. And I love how Moses has that intercessory heart, right? To pray for people, to step in, stand in the gap, help out, be a part of, really get get in there, you know. God, how can I step in here and be, uh, you know, cover their sins? You know, love covers what a multitude of sins. Oh man, Moses, he stepped in the gap, right? He comes to God. And he pleads with God, don't judge these people according to their sins. Have mercy on them. He really, love does cover a multitude of sins there. Wow. Do I act like Moses? You know, do I complain or do I go before God pleading for his mercy for them? Very good thought for me today. So the people refused to enter into the pleasant land for they wouldn't believe his promise to care for them instead they grumbled in their tents and refused to obey the lord right hardness of the heart they did not go into the land instead they grumbled in the tents and refused to obey the lord therefore he solemnly swore that he would kill them in the wilderness does this sound like a raw raw israel song no some people have this idea and i I know i used to i used to think oh the bible is going to be about this narrative of how great these people are and how great they are. It's anything but that, isn't it? It's about the real deal, just how rough and yucky and stubborn they are. And it says, um, um, Therefore he solemnly swore, this is verse 26, that he would kill them in the wilderness, that he would scatter their descendants among the nations, exiling them to distant lands. Wow, that really happened. That's interesting. Verse 27 really took place. They really were scattered all over the land. And that their bodies did. A lot of them died where? In the wilderness. Then our ancestors joined in worship of Baal and Peor, and they even ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They answered the Lord with all these things, so the plague broke out among them. But Phineas had the courage to intervene, and the plague was stopped. Wow, that's, a. I think, the, the narrative in the book of Numbers about Phineas. So he has been regarded as a righteous man ever since that time. At Meribah too, they angered the Lord, causing Moses serious trouble. They made Moses angry, and he spoke foolishly. Oh, poor Moses, right? Dealing with all the people, all of a sudden just gets really bitter and angry towards them. Israel failed to destroy the nations in the land as the Lord commanded them. Instead, they mingled among the pagans and adopted their evil customs. Even when Israel went into the promised land, they didn't do the right thing. They just ended up mingling with everybody else. They did not hold fast to Yahweh. It said they worshipped idols, which led to their downfall. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. Wow. Oh, man. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and their daughters. Sacri- anim- are human sacrifices? Gosh, that's what's being talked about here in Psalm 106. Unbelievable. They defiled themselves by their evil deeds, and their love of idols was adultery in the Lord's sight. Right? It was a leaving of God going into another. That is why the anger of the Lord burned against them, and he abhorred his own special possession. He handed them over to the pagan nations, and they were ruled by those who hated them. Their enemies crushed them and brought them under a cruel power. Again and again he rescued them, but he chose to rebel against them, and they were finally destroyed by their sin. Even so, he pitied them in their distress and listened to their cries. He remembered his covenant with them and released and relented because of his unfailing love. He even caused their captors to treat them with kindness. Man, you even see God's love even in their, oh, just so in the depth of their yuck, man, the depth of the pit, of the mud, of the junk. God is still caring and kind and showing his love, his fatherly love towards Israel. 
even though they're scattered abroad, even though they're worshiping other other things, even though they're doing the most horrible acts of worship, um, you know, sacrificing their children, right, to, to gods, um, God still holds to his covenant with them. Hmm, pretty intense. You know, sometimes we can sin so bad where we go, man, God must not love me anymore. Well, Psalm 106 is a good one to read, right, if that's your thought. Yeah, yeah, you've blown it. And yeah, I've blown it. And yeah, you blow it. And yeah, I blow it. But you know what? God remembers his covenant with you. And that's what Jesus' communion's all about, Right? As much as you do this, you partake of the elements, do this what? In remembrance of what he's done for us, his work on the cross for us, his atonement for us, right? Him dealing with us, him interceding with the Father on our behalf, right? Him going to the Father and saying, God, have mercy on them. See, Jesus, like Moses, stands in the gap, right, for us. Man, isn't that cool? Even though we have, oh, if our sins were revealed to us, even right now, it would blow us away of how far we are from Jesus. That's how much we need saving. And it says he even caused the captors to be kind with them. Hmm. We think we're going our own way on the planet. We think it's going to promise freedom. But it just gets us into more yuck than we ever would have ever imagined. Hmm. Very true. It says, save us, O Lord, our God. Gather us back from among the nations so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say amen. Praise the Lord. So a lot to praise the Lord about, right? A lot of his grace, his persevering in his love for Israel. So very cool, right? Laura says the Bible shows us good, bad, ugly, our human nature, but God is full of grace and mercy towards us despite our faults when we follow Christ. So true, right? So true. You know, everybody's going to try to cover their sin some way. Everybody's going to try to do it. Everybody on the planet tries to do it. Intellectualism, money, fame, power, and, you know, having family, they, they get up, put everything into family uh, to forget really about worshiping God. People do that all the time. They get wrapped up in so many things. We get wrapped up and everything becomes idolatrous in our life. Um, even the things that we find think are so innocent, we find ourselves succumbing to it. And... Uh, um, and so it's beautiful that these psalms continue to point us upward to look up at God and then to look back and take a look and go, gosh, you know, let me look back and let me look at God, how, how we've rebelled as a human race in the past and how we still do today. And yet God is what? Merciful. Gosh, thank you so much. So gracious. Slow to anger, rich in love for sure. So you guys have a great Friday. Enjoy it. I will too. And, uh, you know, great B-Day. I'm excited about that. So uh, you guys have a good one. We'll see you hopefully at church. Okay, bye-bye.